Hello everyone and welcome to Mars Entry Testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. I had previously done a video of Mars Entry Testing in 1.1.3 and my initial intention was to see if there was any difference between one version of Kerbal Space Program and another. What I ended up doing though was seeing the difference between one transfer window and another because in the previous video I arrived at Mars in 163 days. On this launch our transfer window had us arriving in 213 days. So that's 50 days extra. So in the previous video it was five and a half months, in this one it's seven months. And it's a pretty big difference, such a big difference that there's no way we can compare versions of KSP between them and we'll soon see that. In the previous video with the 163 day transfer, our velocity on entering Mars SOI was 5,910 meters per second. On this transfer, the seven month transfer, our entry velocity, as you can see there, was 3,476. That means it was 2,500 meters per second slower. That's a huge difference. And here we have the same craft. It's the same launch script, same craft, same everything. Except we ended up using a little bit more fuel from the top portion, which is the first portion that we're bringing in here. That's the 5 ton mass with the 5 meter heat shield, so the lightest one. And uh, this has a loading of roughly 60 kilograms per meter squared on the heat shield and well here we go now in the previous video this one just blew up because the heat shield has no ablator on it so we'll see what happens here as we're entering and you can see the entry velocity 5796 meters per second compared to 7461 last time the heat shield explodes but not the tanks the tanks are just fine. Like I said, for some reason the heat shields without any ablator are like paper. But the tanks, uh, these aren't any special tanks, they're the exact same tanks that we had in the previous version, in the previous video. The other parts are of course shielded by the tank itself, but obviously we didn't need any ablator or even a heat shield in this case in order to enter on a 7th month window at this velocity. Again, entry speed into Mars atmosphere 5,796, which is 1,700 meters per second slower than last time. Unfortunately, we ended up not going back out again. We didn't only capture, we got brought down in for a crash landing. And the same when we tried to set at 52 kilometers. The first pass was 50 kilometers, this is 52. So on these slower entries, on this slower trajectory, uh, we need a much higher periapsis in order to capture. So this one's coming straight down again and uh, we've sort of failed the whole capture situation. You can see the apoapsis and periapsis going down and this one's gonna die. We just want to capture, we do not want to come in for a landing. So this time I tried at 56 kilometers based on the previous numbers and this time it was going to be good. Um, we still had the heat shield explode. Uh, but the ending apoapsis was 6,895 kilometers with a period of 4 hours and 46 minutes. Exit velocity was 4,026 meters per second. So that's 56 kilometers. This is with a 4.4 ton mass before it lost its heat shield on a 5 meter heat shield. Uh, so um, roughly 60 kilograms per meter squared. So there you have it. That was the correct capture uh, altitude, if you will, uh, basically 55 to 60 kilometers would have worked for this. The next one is the 10 ton mass on the 5 meter heat shield, 10% ablator, and we'll do three tests with this. Based on the information we got on the 5 ton mass and also the information we got from the previous video, but the previous testing, I guessed that uh, the loosest we could be is 50 kilometers and the tightest we could be is 45 and that ended up being roughly true but that doesn't answer the question about what happens with the heat shield in this case with the slower entry speed so uh, here we are entering the same velocity on entry and it is just a massive difference depending on what transfer window you get so I'm gonna have to work out uh, ex you know draw up some graphs to figure out exactly um, what we should aim for in which situation because it's too big a difference. Uh, here we're going to end up capturing at uh, with a 50 kilometer periapsis whereas on the faster transfer window 
we had to use a 42 kilometer periapsis, which in this case would have resulted us crashing into the ground. Here's another pass with 48 kilometers. The previous one brought us into a very loose orbit, 164,000 kilometers, eight day orbit. Uh, this time with 48 kilometers, we are brought to a 20,500 kilometer apoapsis and a 13 hour orbit. And in both cases, in all cases with this, we, we didn't have any charred ablator. So it didn't use any ablator at all. Uh, but as we've seen, just because it didn't use any ablator at all, it doesn't seem to mean that we can get away with not having any ablator on the heat shield. We could get away with just not having a heat shield at all, I suppose, would be the way to go about it. Um, obviously, with a uh, higher loading on the heat shield, you're going to need actual ablator on it. And so, but in any case, we just need a trivial amount of ablator for my actual Mars missions. This pass was at 46 kilometers. Apoapsis ended up being 5,970 kilometers with a period of four hours. So uh, the estimate of 45 to 50 kilometers seemed correct. And judging from the previous video where the 15 ton mass on the five meter heat shield required four kilometers less, I guess that we were looking at uh, something between 41 and 46 kilometers for that one. So here we are with the 15 ton mass, and since I said 4 kilometers less, and we were barely able to capture at 50 kilometers with the 10 ton mass, I brought this in at 46 kilometers, and uh, the beh behavior of it was basically sim similar. Uh, Apoapsis was 98,389 kilometers, and uh, exiting at 4,625 meters per second, so barely a capture kind of thing. And uh, I would test it again at 44, 42, and 40. All of those are going to be successful, though to varying degrees, of course. In other words, it's going to bring us into lower orbits each time, but still keep us in orbit. Uh, though, of course, we would have to boost our periapsis at apoapsis, uh, as with any sort of aero capture. Just a note, I'm providing this information not only for my own benefit, but we do have a collaborative career mode in uh, Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 on Sundays and so I stream that career mode where people offer me craft and we are going to be doing Mars missions and so I'm hoping that contributors of Mars missions will take note of this data and design accordingly. I, uh, there's a public service if you will and so here we see it exiting after a pass at uh, four, that was 44 kilometers, it got to an apoapsis of 17,694 kilometers, period 11 hours. And actually on that pass, there was 0.01 charred ablator. I don't know if you noticed. So a tiny bit of ablator loss on that previous pass. On this pass, there was no ablator loss. Uh, this one was at 42 kilometers, brought us to an apoapsis of 5,512 kilometers, and a period of 4 hours. And so still a good capture. And so basically with uh, this uh, test subject, we can manage 40 to 46 kilometers. And again, the loading on this is 190 kilograms per meter squared. And I, I guess I should note that this is all very different from like uh, Curiosity landing. Curiosity had a 4.5 meter diameter heat shield and was only about a ton, although the entire aero shell and everything was three tons. But still, that's a huge heat shield for relatively low mass. And the reason was it was a very steep re-entry or entry. And that's because they're going straight in for landing. Uh, this sort of aero capture deal uh, doesn't cause as much heat and also doesn't require as much drag because the important thing with something like Curiosity is that the heat shield is capable of giving you enough drag so you slow down so you can pop the parachutes. We don't need to worry about that here because we're just trying to get into orbit. And so that's why our heat shields will be relatively smaller. All right, so on that note, and with this information being disseminated, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.